Okay, so here we have 3D Studio Max. Obviously I'm using version 9, but regardless of what version you're using, the actual layout of all the tools and everything should be pretty much exactly the same. It's one of the consistencies you'll get with Max. Now, just going to quickly show you, this is the uh, timeline down the bottom. We've got the uh, Create tab here, and Modify and so on and so forth. And what we're going to look at today is the tools, which you'll pretty much use regardless of what you want to use 3ds Max for, whether it's animating or just making models for games, you will pretty much need most of these tools here. All the ones I'm going to show you anyway. So obviously we've got Undo and Redo. We've got the Select tool. We've got Select by Name. We've got Select Type or Region. We've got the Move, Rotate and Scale tool. All of these can be used for selecting as well, but the one problem you will run into is if you click on something and then move a little bit with say the move tool you'll move everything a little bit which can be very annoying if you're trying to position everything right for say a lighting effect now jumping along again we've got the snap sorry angle snap toggle and we've also got the mirror tool there's also the uh, materials editor but that's not actually important for the moment and I'll just uh, create some boxes first so I can show you the select tool now, the Select tool does exactly what it suggests. You use it to select things. You hold Control, you can select multiple things, or you can just let go and not have any keys down and select one object at a time. Now, each object is by default given a name. For example, I created three boxes, so we've got boxes one, two, and three. You can name them whatever, and now it's whatever. So if we go to Select Objects by Name, we've got box one, two, and whatever. Now you can select by holding control and clicking on the names, or you can click down here, we've got all, we've got none, and if I select whatever, I can click invert and I'll select box one and two instead. So once you're happy with whatever you selected, you click select and you've got those two objects selected. Now we have the select region, which by default is a square, so obviously it's pretty much like any real thing. It's any selection really. You click and drag and you get a square and everything inside the square is selected. You got the same with this circle. And probably this one's also quite helpful. It's just like the lasso tool in Photoshop. You make any shape you want and anything inside will be selected. So these two boxes will be selected. So that's box two and whatever. Now other than that, we've got the Move tool, which, as you can see, is for selecting, and as that problem was before, I click and held, and it moves a little bit. So, we click a box, we can highlight, we can hover over any of the axes, and it'll, as you can see, the stick here is yellow, and the actual letter Y is yellow, which means I'm only selecting the Y axis. So I can click and hold that, and I can move it up and down the Y axis only, which works with either, any of them. And what you can do is, as you can see, I've got this square here that's uh, highlighted, which means it will move up and down and left and right along the Z and X axis, but not back and forth along the Y axis, regardless of how much I try to move it. Now, with the rotate tool, pretty much the same principle. We've got rings around it in each way, and you can rotate it along that axis, or you can just grab it in the middle here, as you can see the actual sphere. So encompassing the model is it's uh, in a darker colour and it's just free rotate which is very inaccurate, inaccurate but it can be useful if you can actually come up with one now angle snap toggle very helpful because as you can see we've got it's rotating not very precisely it's 107.53 degrees now if we click this little thing here angle snap toggle it will rotate 5 degrees at a time, which makes it very helpful to rotate, say, 90 degrees. Moving on to the scale tool, which you obviously use to change the size of it. Now, as you can see here, all three are selected. It will, move, it will upscale everything along all three axes. Now, I can select one at a time, so this will make it longer, or I could select the Y and make it wider. Sorry, that wasn't the X or I could select two at a time, so I could make it taller and longer, but not wider. And then again, you can select all three at once. 
Now, another helpful thing is the mirror tool. Now, as you can see, it's... I'll flip it along the z-axis so you can see. That's... It was previously... See, it's uh, below zero on the uh, x-axis. But now, if we go like this and click z, it will flip it. So now it's upside down. Now, this is very good if you want something... If you want to copy something, so you can click copy. And I've got exact copy, a duplicate in fact, of the exact same object except it's been flipped or rotated 180 degrees, but it's not actually rotated, it's physically flipped. So if you make, say, the left arm of a character model, you can then flip it and you can have the right arm. So you do that and now I have two objects and it's been named box3 because I renamed that whatever. And that's pretty much all the basic tools you really need to, you really need to use 3ds Max.